Hey guys, welcome back. It's the hashtag Magda on Air Digital Network, magdasearchgroup.tv. You are on the Big Game Hunters Big podcast. Game. Michael Flint, Rory McMillan. On today's show, we got a hot topic coming to you today. We are talking about how to nail, nail an interview. How to go into an interview, get the hiring manager excited, get in the door, get everyone fired up and make sure that you're the guy to get that job. How to close it out, right? How to get them excited and close it out. Absolutely. So on that note, we're gonna start with first impressions. Everyone, want, everyone go, first of all, everyone goes for an interview because they want the job, right? They don't just show up there to sit there and kick tires all day and- No, you're pre-qualified. And, and they're interested people. in speaking with you. Yeah, they're pre-qualified, yeah. they're interested, they're interested in speaking with you. Now we wanna provide you as headhunting experts that how you can go in there and really nail that interview out of the park and how you can really get that hiring manager excited so you're the next guy getting that. Offer Absolutely. Of, offer of employment and uh, closing it out. Pick out your outfit the night before. Yeah. <laughs> have it ironed. Have it ready to go. Shine your shoes. There's always somebody looking at your shoes. Oh, yeah. Whether you're a male or female person, somebody in that office is going to check out your shoes. When you get there, everybody is an ambassador or you're an ambassador to everybody. everybody. However you want to look at it. You never know who may have uh, an opinion on you as a hiring decision. So make sure you're respectful, maintain eye contact and positive body language to every single person from that parking lot all the way through to the boardroom. Yeah, because the thing is, is impression is everything, right? 100%. Your first impression is, is, is key. You gotta show up, you gotta look good, you gotta be on time, you gotta be ready, you gotta dress like a million bucks. If you don't have a million dollar suit, go out there and spend some money and get a nice suit, right? If you're going for a, a business corporate job, you gotta yeah, look, look, the um, part. Look, look like a million bucks, right? You gotta look like the person that, that presentable, right? They're investing in you, you gotta invest in yourself. If you can't invest in yourself, why are they gonna invest in you? So you gotta look great, you gotta be on time and you gotta be ready. Are What's the next one, Mike? What's the next thing that someone has to do clean right. your ears because this is equal parts of telling your value proposition and also listening mm -hmm. ultimately when they're interviewing you there's two questions that they're asking can this individual do the job really really well and will i like working with them there's That's gonna right. be a lot of questions that kind of lead and give context in terms of who you are what you bring yeah. to the party if you're hired but you definitely have to focus in on on making sure that what you bring to the party you can clearly articulate succinctly so mm -hmm. that your value proposition is clearly communicated. Absolutely, you gotta listen, you gotta absorb the information uh, and you wanna go in there willing to, you know, don't come in, you know, overconfident or, or, or over enthusiastic or come across as if you're, there's desperation of all because no one wants to hire that. You wanna go in there confident, um, not overconfident, but presentable, professional, understanding, w w the one, you gotta understand the position, two, you gotta know and get a solid understanding of the people that you're meeting with yep. and look, you know, look them, engage them, engage the room, get each person excited about who you are. And at the end of the day, lay out your conversation. You're gonna get asked the question, who are you? Tell us about yourself. You know, yep. why do you wanna work here? How did you hear about this position? Um, you know, what, what excites you about our, what our product, our service? You know, what, what can you do for us versus the, the lineup of candidates that we have or the applications I have sitting on my desk right now? Why should I give you an opportunity? Why should I give you a shot? These questions are gonna come across your desk and you wanna make sure that you're prepared for them. Absolutely. Right? Yep. Uh, companies always like to uh, get you to walk them through your resume. And, and a really good exercise mm -hmm. going in, into a role is, is to provide context against your work experience. So for example, if you're going in for a sales position, you know, buzzwords that would be a associated with that would be, you know, Hunter, sales methodology, cold calling, all the fundamentals of sales pipeline 101. Yeah. But what you want to do is you want to take your resume and you want to add, you know, one or two bullet points against what you've what you've done because they're reading that already. And the goal here is to build your value and, and to put some some layers of character within your value proposition. Yeah. And you do that by talking about what you've done, what mm -hmm. you experienced, some of the wins you've had in your career, what you like about your job, maybe why you took on a new role and what you're looking for yeah. in the next opportunity. More color around each position color. that you worked at, right? For sure. Um, not just saying, you know, I've done this, I hit my targets, I, I, I over exceeded my expectations, I was the number one sales guy in the room, or I was, a, I was the best operations manager within the company, I but saved the company this amount. Of, what did you do exactly? Ex then explain how you do it and provide examples of how you achieve that end goal, right? That's yeah. the key thing is a lot of people go into Big. interviews and they never provide examples. Yeah, you know, I, uh, I, was, the, I was the best sales guy in the room. I was 27 to 30% to target. And uh, yeah, it was great. And my, my hiring managers thought so. Well, okay, well, well, how did you hit 27% per target? 
You know, yeah, what who's your best challenges? Customer? Yeah, who was who your best counselor? What are some of the challenges you had to overcome? You yeah. know, explain yourself, right? You, <laughs> you got to explain what you've done. Provide more color, more bandwidth around who you are and what you've done, and the great things that that you know that you've done that you can now explain to your potential new employer oh. about who you are. And if you don't 100%. keep that conversation going, if you don't keep that hiring manager excited all the way throughout the interview, you're probably not going to get the job, right? Because right now it's a competitive market. There's people out there looking for yeah. work but there's very few great, great people with the skill sets the hiring manager is looking for that meet the requirements of that role. So companies can be selective. They can determine who they want to hire, really depending on the position. Sorry, I would like yep. to rephrase that. Depending on the position, because you know if you're a, a developer, an engineer, an IT expert with these pr unique programming skills, then you know uh, companies need to be more uh, uh, you know uh, lenient to saying, hey, listen, let, let's just guy in the door and start Do you have a pulse? Yeah, <laughs> do you have a pulse? Good to go. Because you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> we need that skill set. But yeah, go, get, getting back to topic here, but uh, I think that, I think the key thing is you when you got to understand understand the role, understand the company, understand who you're meeting with and uh, you know, engage, yeah. provide more color around the positions, more bandwidth, right? Yeah. And and and, and that, that always falls short when 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 candidates or potential people gone into interview. I've seen it when people come in and interview with me. It's like, "Who are you? What have you done?" Yeah. Okay, what can you do for me, right? <laughs> well, that's part of it as well. I mean, yeah. listen, you, you are going in there to present what you bring to the party what your value proposition is. Absolutely. But this is also your opportunity to vet the company you're interviewing. So mm -hmm. what's important to you? Like, do you have a list of questions going into the interview? Yeah. What, what, what is the onboarding orientation like? Uh, in terms of career progression, you know, how does it look for, for other employees that have yeah. joined the organization in the same in the same role? And where are they now? Yeah. You know, find out, uh, you know, get a measure of the organization. People do like talking about themselves and, and like very likely the, the hiring manager, whether it's human resources or, you know, a senior management uh, a person that, that's that next point of contact yeah. within the organization, they're going to want to talk about about their organization. They should be passionate about what they do and their passion should be something that inspires you to continue in the process. But, but I think, Michael, that the, the, the passion and the reason the hiring managers always talk about the business, the company or, or about themselves is that they're really trying to gauge interest in that candidate when they they start talking about those things. It's like when we try and sell a product or mm -hmm. we try and sell a service to a potential new customer, we talk a lot about who we are, what we've done. We're really trying to gauge interest. Are they biting? Are they serious? Are they interested? True. And yeah, I think true. a hiring manager will come along the same way. Like they'll talk a lot about the company. They'll talk a lot about the business to really engage one. You know, I can, it, you're, you're in face-to-face -face meetings now, right? There's a lot of body language that's showing up in different sense of urgency, you know, fear of law, whatever it may be. Whatever that guy's body language is, it's like, I'm trying to read and determine, is this guy really interested? That's a good chance for you to ask a lot of questions. Don't always agree with the hiring manager too as well. That's something you should never do. Yep. You should challenge that hiring manager's thought process where it doesn't come across as if you're a know-it-all. Do not be the know-it-all. That's never a good thing. But challenge that hiring manager's thought process. Plant some questions in there, you know, that's going to get his brain thinking a little bit is really going to think that you're articulate that yeah. you know what it, you know what the position that you're applying for you know the direction you kind of know understand what the company and product is that you're selling and really how you can add value yeah well listen i mean and, and this is what i've done but this is what i can do for you and, and i don't think that happens enough well it's about being prepared too you know uh, i think um i think it's strategic for organizations to put candidates on the spot and, and come up with those one or two questions that that they're not prepared for yeah. and uh i, I think I, I think there's a, there's a, you get a measure of an individual if they're asked yeah. something that's clearly outside of their comfort zone and they have to stretch and find that answer. Yeah. And you, you should always be, be prepared for that. Yeah. Uh, I think you got to find a pain point too as well within the, why, why is there a need? Understand with the hiring manager, why is there a need right now? Why are you looking to fill this position? Yep. Is it a new position? Did someone get let go? What are the struggles that you're having right now in this department? Then boom. This is how I can provide a solution to that problem. Money is attracted to a problem. You will get drawn in if you can be a solution to anyone's problem, right? Yeah. It's like, how, determine what those companies' pain points are. Ha, start having general discussions around them by, by, by rehashing, going back on your experience and how it can provide relevancy to that job that you're applying for. And then- example of performance. Sorry? It's an example of performance. Example example of performance. And uh, you know, you want to be closing out. You want, like I said, keep everyone engaged at all times, keep them excited about who you are and direct, direct, direct it all the way to the end of the interview. How long do you think an interview should typically take with a hiring manager? Is it a good thing if it's only- It depends if you're- An if, hour, or should it be two hours or 45 well, minutes? I think anywhere between 45 minutes and, and 45 minutes and 90 minutes, depending on the type of role you're going for and who yeah. you're speaking to, whether or not it's a panel interview or a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. If it's a one-on-one -on -one interview, I mean, typically, you know, 
45 minutes to an hour, yeah. depending on, on how on point everyone is, that, that's more than enough time to get a measure of an individual. Should a candidate take references, take their resume? I think so. I think you should also take notes. You know, I, I'm an individual that, that would want to see someone write stuff down, you know, get yeah. it right, ensure there's continuity. I also think that it's important to make sure that you, you present your value proposition very clearly at the end of the interview. And, you know, based on everything that you've heard today, uh, is there any reason that I wouldn't be advancing to the next steps? Because you, you don't sometimes know whether or not maybe something was miscommunicated or misconstrued. And you want to put yourself in a position to have confirmation that you're moving forward or at least know when you're going to get some direction on when that answer will be made. Yeah. And then how can, they, how can a uh, candidate close out that interview to know that they're either going to get a call back or try and secure that job? Well, I mean, if, if, you're in a situ if, if you're in a position to ask for the job, when can we get started? I'm excited and I'm ready to go. Yeah. Is, is, is there a fine line between too, too desperate? Like almost like, oh, I don't know. Like this guy's too gung-ho about coming to You gotta read it though. Here. You gotta you read gotta it, read, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's a little bit on your energy and that yeah. other person's energy. Uh, yeah. You know, what time yes. of day you catch them. So you, you have to be intuitive enough to, yeah. to know when you can kind of push the envelope a little yeah. bit, let your personality shine and when you should back off and let due process Follow happen. up notes. What do, do you believe in follow up email? I do. A after communication service, like after communication. Hey, thank you. I mean, listen, manners 101. Yeah. You know, I mean, we say it all the time here, polite persistence in sales. Yeah. But you look at if you're marketing yourself and you're going out for interviews, you know, a thank you goes a long yeah. way. You, you keep going until you get a no, right? You keep yeah. going until you get a no or you keep getting in and uh, uh, you keep going. And uh, like I said, have a pipeline of opportunities going on for you. Uh, we would love to hear from you guys. We'd love to hear about how you guys close out an interview. We place candidates all the time within uh, great companies all across North America. And we would love uh, to hear your guys' suggestions on how you close out an interview. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, it's the Big Game Hunters podcast, Michael Flint. Roy McMillan. We're bringing you shows each and every week. iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, YouTube. You know it. Um, keep tuning in. We love you guys and Thanks. see you next week.